<laughs> Welcome to Horrors Yet Unseen, the podcast where we assign each other horror movies to watch and then talk about it so our spouses don't have to listen to us go on and on and on about scary stuff they don't like. I'm Zach. And I'm Steve. Let's talk about some scary movies. By the way, there will absolutely be spoilers in this show. You have been warned. That song is in my head now. <laughs> it's me uh, first. Okay. I thought I went first last time. Did you go first last time? Yeah. Talk about no. I talked about Brain Dead first. You talked about Pet Cemetery. Okay. But it's it's your turn. Here we Wicker go, man. Let's open up my notes. I don't know why I'm opening up my notes. I literally didn't take any this week. Okay, so I don't know I, the the movie that you gave me was yep. uh, the Wicker Man. Correct. I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants with this one because, again, I didn't write anything down. I don't know what it's rated on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know what it's rated on anywhere else. Here's the deal. <laughs> we're just, we're just going to free ball this one. I, 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 can, I can tell what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Steve made me watch OG Midsommar. And... <laughs> That's basically yes. what this movie was. Let's be honest with ourselves. It wasn't necessarily bad. I I did enjoy this movie, much like you are finding that all, not all eighties horror movies are necessarily bad. Um, right. I want the complete reverse, and not all seventies movies are fantastic. There were some super creepy moments. Um, I did have to keep reminding myself that this is a 70s horror movie. Right. So the movie basically follows a policeman yeah. and he gets the, the police station or whatever, get a letter that there is a missing child on this island called Summer Isle. And, an anonymous letter. Yeah, just an anonymous letter. Yeah. So. I think you kind of piece together that maybe the mom or maybe just make an assumption that the parents wrote this and just didn't sign it. I'm not too sure, but he flies a plane, goes to Summer Isle, and they immediately start acting weird. (laughs) Immediately. So he's like, send a dinghy. And they're like, nope, you don't have access to this island, even though you're a police officer. And he's like, yeah, I'm a freaking police officer, so you need to send a dinghy. Which, also, hilarious name for a boat. Let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, come on. His immediate, as soon as he said, <laughs> send the dinghy, I was like, okay, well, that's weird. Um, oh, I knew that it was a boat, but it's still funny that a small boat is called a dinghy. And... Uh, the group of elderly gentlemen who are standing all around, because why not? They all, <laughs> it, he's like, I'm basically here to find this girl. Rowan Morrison, I think is her yeah, name. Susan, yeah. And they're like, every single one of them is like, nope, don't know her. Never seen her. She doesn't look like she's from the island. When they said she doesn't look like she's from the island, I immediately thought that's incestual. <laughs> Like something's happening because everybody looks the same on this island. That's crazy. Right. Um, no, it's also Brit. England is kind of that way. Well, thanks for tr- throwing shade to the folks across the pond. Um, <laughs> <laughs> take that, they're Scott indi- and Mark. They are they are indigenous to the island. Yeah, we thought you guys were twins when we were on your podcast. You guys look exactly the same. Uh-huh. I didn't say that. That's exactly what you just said, Steve. <laughs> okay. I was just yeah. That's exactly what I said. You're right. Thank you for admitting it. Um, <laughs> boom, roasted. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the actually, let's back up. The movie basically starts out showing you that he's an incredible, devout Christian. Okay, 
right? Religious trauma right out the gate, okay? Right. Right out the gate. Took me immediately back to the church that I grew up with, which wasn't necessarily bad. I didn't grow up in a, in a terrible environment. I didn't realize that I was in a terrible environment until much later. So, anywho, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> he's an incredible, devout Christian. And, or at least you know that from him just singing this song. Right. Also, Barley and what was there was a song called like Barley and man, I don't even know what the heck the song is called. It's such a weird tune. Was it the, was it the uh, drinking song about the, the about the landlord's daughter? Yeah, yeah. No, uh-huh. that was a weird song. That was an odd. Yeah. Okay. It might. It's weird to me because pub culture is yep. not a thing. Well, it's not. It's. It's a it's different not, thing it, yeah, it's here in America. Different. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here in America, it's very, like, I don't know. It's not what this is. I'll at least right. say that. It's not what this is, uh, where everybody kind of knows all of the songs or we're just... Because I also thought, how do they know where to come in? That was my other thought, too. Like, how does everybody mm-hmm. know where to come in? Yeah. Do the does everybody have their own verse in this song? I don't know how. Yeah, like I've been watching. Is. I've been watching the the uh, Welcome to Wrexham. Yeah, it's a it's a you know about the uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney buying that soccer team or the football team, whatever in the in the yeah. UK. And they they're always like every single there's a, there's a chant or a song for every single one of the players. Anything that happens, they have a chant or a song for it. It's like everybody just knows this in, inherently in their bones or something. Yeah. I don't know. I want to know what Spotify is like over in England. We got a lot of questions. Let's go back on the You Run podcast. We need we need some answers. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Also, Mark, Scott, if you've made it to this section of, of the podcast, if you made it past my rant, if you've made it through the woods and you're here, <laughs> help us understand what the heck is going on. Anyway, so pub culture is very different. Yeah, that was a weird song. The song is called Corn Rigs, Corn by, Paul, Rigs. by written by Paul Giovanni. Not Paul Giamatti. That's a okay. different guy. Paul Giovanni. Yeah. Giovanni. His brother. And I thought you'd definitely laugh at that joke. Nope, not even a little bit. You don't have to laugh now, Steve. You don't have to laugh now. It's a sympathy laugh. So that yeah. song was super weird. They played it several times at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. Also, the fact that they knew that they knew that the landlord's daughter was upstairs seducing someone, oh my word. and so the downstairs people just started to play random songs and started to basically sing this enchantress song that would that, lure I, young I, men to her bedroom. It was so I, creepy and are weird. Are you talking about like when she came into his room, like and was dancing naked? No, I like so there. There's. Oh, one, there's the first time it happens is where Lord Summerisle brings a boy to her, like outside of her window, and they start playing this song downstairs. The second time it happens is when she's trying to seduce the police officer. Oh, right. and he's like basically like convulsing up against the wall because he's debating like, do I want to go inside? Do I not want to go? Like. <laughs> At one point, he opens the door a little bit, and he's like, "Ah, oh, maybe I'll go." No, I can't go. The and overacting was just so wild. Funny. Yeah, because he's a forty-three-year-old virgin. Like, <laughs> like he's. It's just not my world at all. <laughs> like, anyway. So yeah, <laughs> what the heck is this movie? <laughs> so yeah anyway yeah, he, he, so he shows up all the way back to the beginning now he shows up shows the picture nobody clearly knows he goes and starts investigating as you would yeah but he clearly has like okay he's clearly got some lde going on lde little dick energy is that's the <laughs> vibe that i get from this dude yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that he's got okay because he goes in and from the moment he meets these island people, this this mm-hmm. cult or not cult, this culture on the on this island, it's kind of a cult. <laughs> well, let's be honest, it's not not a cult, but I want to be respectful. No, 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 it's, it's a straight up cult. Go ahead. Yeah, he is asserting his dominance. Like I'm from right. the mainland, 
Right. I'm a police I speak officer. for the king. Exactly. He's or whatever. Exactly. Like you broke off from us. You answered to me. Like so, but it's little dick energy is what it is. And yeah, so he goes and starts to piece some things together. He goes and visits her mom. She doesn't have a clue who this girl is in the picture, quote unquote. Has yep. another daughter already. Very curious about that. They did not explain that to my knowledge in the movie of what where this other girl came from. Okay. Yeah, you start to kind of really see some cracks when he goes to exhume her body. Mm -hmm. And there's a freaking rabbit there. No, sorry, not a rabbit, a hare. They make that distinction right. very quick. <laughs> They're like, no, not a rabbit. It's a hare. I'm like, time out. You're getting too caught up on the fact that we're splitting we're splitting hairs <laughs> at this point. Ha ha. No, not funny. Oh my gosh, you just made a sick pun, dude. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Just actually laugh or not. Anywho. <laughs> I feel insecure when you do this. I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're fine. You're clearly busy doing something else as a rant incoherently over here. See, you didn't even laugh at that. You didn't even laugh at that. Oh, my gosh. I laughed at that. Just give me a ring. Anyway. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this podcast is falling to pieces. I 100% think that this, um, I'm falling to pieces in this podcast. Fall into pieces. This is not my brightest hour. And no, I, you're doing great. No, you're I'm doing not. great. And, I'm paying uh, attention to you. I was trying to communicate with my son about the, the, the band thing. So it's sorry, it's 100% okay. I'm just being goofy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is that the phone? Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The overacting. Well, I'll just I'll just take that clip and I'll splice it into any you know, like the me laughing. I I'll want you to whatever. know that nothing would any make place me you want me to put nothing. Okay, would yeah. make me happier for you to artificially put a fake <laughs> laugh. In. Anywho, yeah, the when they start putting the masks on, that was the that was the like the height of the creepiest part of this is like when the townspeople started putting on these these animal yeah. masks and like, like the parade or whatever. Then like popping up because he go I think he goes out. He goes out to his helicopter or, or his, his airplane to find out that right. it's been tampered with. Because, of course, yeah, yeah. you trusted these people. And they all start popping up all, like around that cobblestone wall, like one right. at a time. <laughs> that was super cre the the, creepy. Because the masks. It was the masks were super creepy. Yeah, and I was here for it. I enjoyed the creepy aspect of this. That the the seventies vibes were were great. The twist at the end, I very much did not see coming. Mm. I probably could have saw it coming, but I thought it was going to go in a very different way. Okay, so he it turns out that. He's not only not a fan of the fact, he's not only super suspicious of these people because he thinks that everybody's lying to him, but he's also very much against everything that they are religiously. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's like, have you people not heard of Jesus? And at one right. point, Lord Summer Farquaad, whatever his name is. Lord, Lord Sauron. Sauron, exactly. Lord Summer Isle. Is like, right. yeah, God's dead. <laughs> and he's like, what? Like, right. he freaks yeah. out. And I'm like, dude, well, you've never heard this, uh, this idea before. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I can't believe. Like, <laughs> so crazy. And because the guy's basically like, he had his chance and he messed up and, and the new gods killed him. Like, or the old gods killed him or we banished him or <laughs> right. whatever the case is. Or we just chose to move on from him. He had his chance. So crazy. The twist at the end I did not see coming because I assumed that Rowan was dead. Oh, yeah, same. And same. she was not dead. No. I assumed she that she was, was... She was as good as dead for as far as they were concerned, right? Well, I, I was also bought in hook, line, and sinker. Oh, they buried her and 
Like they actually sacrificed her because that's what they kept saying over and over. Like we sacrificed her. She's not really right. here. She is somewhere else. She She's now a hare. And so I just assumed that we're going into the mi- mystical side of this religion. And that's where they were going. I didn't expect for her to be alive at the end of this movie. And that they they wrote the note like they as a people wrote this anonymous note about rowan and planned the whole thing and in order to get their crops uh to grow again they're going to sacrifice him somebody who willfully mm-hmm. came to the island somebody pure of heart and somebody who's a virgin like he met all of the criteria to be sacrificed. Right. I will say this. Much like the yoga girl, this dude did not put up very much of a fight. Okay? I was nope. kind of like at least like pacifistly protest them right. dragging you to the wicker man. Not even a little bit. Like just just be limp. Or or even when he got when they stuck him in the wicker man. I'm like, no, he didn't he it's didn't made of sticks. Yeah, he didn't kick his way out. out. He basically he basically just reached his arm through and prayed for them and prayed for himself. And I'm like, dude, you deserve to get burned. Like, come on. What yeah, are you what are you lame. doing, dude? So <laughs> Yeah, he because he basically just he basically just gave up and it was I was disappointed that the movie poster shows him in the Wicker Man. Uh-huh. And basically kind of gives away oh, the ending of the movie. I didn't realize. I mean, you don't realize that until the end of the movie. So the movie's called The Wicker oh. Man, but The Wicker Man is basically the last five minutes of the movie. Right. I also thought that the goats and pigs and whatnot screaming <laughs> was a bit much. Yeah. Was a bit I much. understand that that's very realistic, but we're also 1973, and I don't entirely think that you're not <laughs> harming those animals slightly. Right, they probably were. <laughs> so I, I mean, they eat, yeah, barbecue after the after filming wraps up, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know. Here's don't know. the thing, Steve. Do you feel? the same feelings for this guy that you do for the mom who got turned into the turkey in the movie Thanksgiving. (laughs) Because both of them basically met the exact same ending. Yeah. uh, (laughs) My problem with uh, the the turkey lady in in Thanksgiving was that they trussed her up like a turkey and put her on the table to eat. It was it was the what they did with her afterwards. It was the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so with him, I just was kind of glad he died a little bit. He was kind of whiny. Yeah. It was <laughs> the, that was I thought I did think that it was a good twist. I did not see it coming. I was also very so caught up in the mid ness of this yeah. movie mm-hmm. that I was just along for the ride. I'm like, where the heck is this going? Are we gonna it like? How much of a, how much did Ari Aster take from this movie? Because clearly right. like, this movie is very, yeah, very, yeah. very much before. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was a clear inspiration to me. And it made me Google, like, what what other movies inspired Midsommar? Because mm-hmm. um, th- there, are, there are several. Once I got past the articles about him uh, writing a breakup movie. And... <laughs> Because there were a lot yeah. of those articles, and I'm like, I don't care yeah, about like, this. I only care about like what what movies did he say right. inspired this movie? And a lot of the lists did not include Wicker Man. And I'm like, I don't really? think that I want you to be an exhaustive. If you're going to make a list, don't be like, well, how could top you 10, not say? Because this is a clear, not necessarily shot for shot remake, but the entire premise is. We are a society of people who believe in this particular thing and phallic symbol and yep. like, yeah. And um, weird rituals. 
exactly sacrificing somebody at the end the a- ancient ancient rituals that we've all con- that basically the majority of society has moved on past but this is our culture and we don't believe in okay here's another thing i thought it mm-hmm. was a very interesting concept but then we're like resurrection actually the kids don't gel with it reincarnation is much easier for them to digest than mm. resurrection and I was like, oh, dang. I forgot about that. Yeah. Should I teach my kids reincarnation? Like, I immediately, I went, <laughs> I went that, like, what's the science? Is there science behind that? I don't really know. I don't know. It was, it was very, I was very curious about that. All in all, let me live rate this. I'm going to open up Letterboxd. Wicker Man. Okay, I'm going to give this movie, I think I'm going to agree with you, Steve. I'm going to give this movie a four, four out of five. Um, I thought that it was, uh, the twist at the end was, and there was kind of a double, a double twist. Cause yeah, yeah. He sees Rowan about to get sacrificed. And then he immediately runs after Rowan and no one runs after him. Yeah. And I was like, what's happening here? Yeah. It it drew me in. That twist really drew me in. And then she's like, oh, we can escape. I know a way to escape the this cave. So they go through the cave and Lord Summer Isle and the teacher and everybody are waiting on the other mm-hmm. side of the cave. Yep. And so there's a secondary twist. And um, yeah, it was... I thought it was a pretty decent movie. I I'm very interested to see the Nicolas Cage version of this movie mm. because I think it's going to be a little bit more unhinged. Everybody goes on about how bad it was. I've not, I haven't seen it myself. Is it also is that movie a remake? Is the the 2006 version of uh, with with uh, Cage is a remake? Yes, it remade as The Wicker Man. Okay, so I definitely am going to. Oh, and there's a there's a. This movie has a sequel. This this called, one does? Called The Wicker Tree. Really? From 2011. Oh. So the, you mean the... Uh, the, the Wicker... One has... The Wicker Man, 1973, has a sequel. The Wicker Tree. Called The Wicker Tree. It was made oh, in 2011. Which I think one can argue that's such a huge gap. Not a sequel. Yeah. You got like five years once the movie is released to come out with the sequel. And then <laughs> I'm going to say maybe you got 10 years. Maybe we'll give you the grace of 10 years. Well, they, bo- they both have they both have 1.9 on Letterboxd. The Cage one and the tw- 2011 one. Oh, fantastic. So definitely I'm going to have to watch the Cage one. Uh, the sequel, Wicker Tree, probably not going to watch that one. But, but the Wicker Tree is is directed by the same guy who directed the first one. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> the first <laughs> Wicker Tree, the first review says a cross between the Wicker Man and amateur porno made by dogging enthusiasts <laughs> and an episode of Bricker. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Ah, uh, I don't know. That's scary. Yeah, it was. Half it was star. definitely. It was definitely odd, and I thought it was a decent movie. I thought it was a decent yeah. movie. It's a it's a decent movie and and it's um it's definitely one of the uh, foundational movies for that the that subgenre of the folk horror stuff, right? Particularly the British folk horror, right? Horror. Uh, I don't know. This is technically Scottish Island, so maybe I don't know if the British are mad. Be don't want to get the whole political thing with the, in the British Isles, I you know? Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, three point. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say four point oh for this movie. It's it's worth watching. It's definitely it's it's only odd because I'm looking back in time, and right. I'm looking into you know British another an, at least at least another culture something that is not I'm not necessarily familiar with. So right. some of the things like you know the pub song about the landlord's daughter <laughs> is odd to me. It's yeah. not the song is not odd. Or the fact that they have sing, pub singing culture is not odd. I know that that exists, but the fact that they like 
the fact that the the landlord is kind of fine with him talking about his daughter like this like i don't know it's just well, odd to me and i well i thought it was just like a song but then there's actually a landlord's daughter <laughs> yeah you know well, they, he's like they, trying to seduce yeah should they, he calls her out to show the police officer to the room and they immediately go into song as soon as she comes right. into the room that's about right, right, right. how she said sed- how about how she has the sweetest like sex with people yeah. in in the on the island and i'm like oh my gosh this is wild well and <laughs> if he would have just given in you know and went to her room and had sex with her He'd be alive right now. He probably would be, but he, they knew that he, his pride, they preyed upon it. Like, and yeah. I understand I'm I, unlike, unlike Midsommar. Yeah. Where I slightly felt bad that everyone kind of died. <laughs> I 100% did not feel bad for this guy. Yeah. Like, no, 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 they basically gave you all of the clues that you would need. Hey, you, they even flat out said, you're not going to want to be here tomorrow. Right. And he was like, <laughs> challenge accepted. Like, no, dude. Yeah, like, goes back to like the, well, I'm the representative of the, the, the crown. Yeah. And then, oh, my plane doesn't work. And then he asks the same guy who li- who he knows lied to him about the photo and goes, did you see anybody tamper with my plane? Yeah. And the guy's like, no. And he freaking believes him. I'm like, dude, you're an idiot. You're, you deserve, you deserve this. Also, right. your over totally. religiousness makes me want to also do the same thing to people sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, you deserve to die, bro. You deserve to die. Uh, well, I'm glad you liked it. I I did I did enjoy it. Yes, I wouldn't say it's a, a like I don't know if I'd watch it again. I because I feel like wouldn't. I got out, I got out of it what I needed to get out of it. Yep, this is a and one. I see and a done. lot of the, I see its fingerprints in a lot of movies since then. Yeah, and a reminder about that uh, the movie well documentary on Shutter Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. Mm-hmm. It mentions this movie about about how how kind of a seminal work it is in the in the in the, in the genre. Yeah. That's that's another documentary that I I gotta see. Yeah, this is it's definitely a, a, the kind of movie that is a one and done. I yeah, wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, I would watch Esp- Midsommar over and over and over again before I would see The Wicker Man again. Especially for nineteen seventy three. It wasn't bad for seventy three. It wasn't the seventy three ness of this movie. I just, I don't know. I. I don't know. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe well, I, it is I, the I just, fact that it's this is an older piece of piece of film yeah and i'm now just modern so i would watch a modern right. retelling of this movie which in a lot of ways is midsummer which in a lot of ways is midsummer i would actually like to see a a completely modern remake of this movie just shot for shot mm-hmm. retell this particular story yeah it was also cool to see uh christopher lee that young right I don't think I've ever seen him in anything anything that young. Yeah, wild hair, wild sideburns, fantastic. Right. Like his 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 voice is very commanding. That's fantastic. I, yeah, he's such a great actor. Um, yeah. You yeah. shall not pass, right? That's him. Right? No, that's definitely Gandalf. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> same thing. Same, same. All white, all white bearded men in Middle sure, Earth are sure. are the, it's same the same person. guy. Yeah, uh, very much. It's very men vibes. <laughs> Which is all of the men in the Lord of the Rings are played by the same actor, like Christopher Lee at different ages. Yeah, 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 yeah. You thought it was Hugo Weaving? It wasn't Christopher <laughs> Lee, dude. Yeah. By the way, it's, it's Samara Weaving's uh, uncle. I found out. I mean, that's you know, never thought about that. But wait, what? Yeah, Hugo Weaving is Samara Weaving's uncle. Hold on, I have to put the back of my head back together. You just like. The, the, there was yeah. no shotgun involved. Oh my gosh. You know who she is, right? I know. <laughs> I love Samara Weaving. She's fantastic. Right. Yeah. She is. She's from Australia. Dude, and, she um, is? She's Australian. Yeah. Dude, I got to put the she back of my look, head look, back look, together. You just. Yeah. <laughs> Google, Google like an interview with her, like on late night, late night talk show or whatever. She's totally Australian. And uh, yeah, her, her uncle is Hugo Weaving. I guess that would make sense. But yeah, I, I don't yeah. think you piece that together. 
I didn't I piece just, it together. I, I wasn't looking. You know, for I, it. I, I yeah, I wasn't either. I'm just like, oh, whoa, 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 what the, what yep. the what? Well, fantastic. Also, didn't know that Hugo was Australian either. Mm-hmm. All the good, you know, all the good actors are Australian. Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. That's about the only other one that I can name. Um, well, the Braveheart guy. Mel Gibson Mel is G- Australian. Mel Gibson's Australian. What, yep. dude? Yep. How did I not know that? Mainly because he probably, yeah. he lost his mind, and I just lost kind of respect a little bit for him. Maybe. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. There's also, he doesn't episodes. talk like he's Australian. Not in any of his movies. Maybe oh. he's like. Has he completely? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And anyway. who's the, who's the guy that plays uh, Wolverine? Hugh Jackman. He is. He's Australian. I knew that. Yeah. Did yeah. I? Yeah. I don't know if I knew that. No. I don't think the, Australia but, is a real. Country. I didn't see the anyway. back here. <laughs> It's a continent too, so whatever. I think I've been there, but I don't know. You've been to Australia? Like, yeah. We're getting too deep into the weeds. We gotta stop talking about stupid Australia. Also, we love I, you. Down I there. went I, I went to Australia to uh go to cotton farms. So as you do. I'll tell you later. <laughs> anyway, uh okay. <laughs> my turn. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, before we move on to that, there's a TV show. I think it's like a limited series type deal, six episodes called The Third Day. And it's, it stars Jude Law. And it's very much in this uh, strain of things. There's like this island that he drives to that like during um, high tide, the, the road is covered up. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a uh, it's very much this way. So. If you want more of that kind of a vibe of things. All right. Moving on to the Lost Boys. The Lost Boys. Um, I did take copious notes on this one. So the Lost Boys is a movie that you may have heard of. Um, if yeah. you are, <laughs> if you've been around a while. The uh, consensus around the internet and the world in general seems to be that this is the one of the quote unquote uh, uh, the best one of the best vampire movies ever made. Very much so. I get the same. Yeah, I know. It's like a seventy-seven tomato, certified fresh, eighty-five percent audience score. Bucket holding the popcorn still. Uh, other places, uh, IMDb seven point two, Metacritic sixty-three. And the um, the letterbox is three point six, which is pretty high for letterbox standards. Um, I fully disagree with all of that because they are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hot take! I did not see that coming. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be like. And this movie was great too. Nope, this movie sucked a butt. <laughs> what the heck? Once again, this may be, be maybe this may be my issue with the eighties coming back to you know haunt me. Or I thought that that's me. I thought that when you wrote that down in the notes that that's what you were going to talk to me about. That you were be like no, the was, Lost Boys ch- changed my life. No. It was it was the uh, the movie uh, uh, Happy Birthday to Me. Oh, that's so good. I changed my mind about that. So best plot twist Lost ever. Boys. <laughs> the best one. I'm gonna come out right out and say it is not a good movie. The acting sucks. Just sucks. We'll stop there. <laughs> um <laughs> the story is all over the place. Yeah. And <laughs> okay, first of all, this is a movie about a bunch of 30 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> really. They're supposed to be teenagers, right? Yeah, but they look—they all look thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They look thirty-olds with questionable hairstyles. Who all who all live in California and are vampires? Okay. Um, this movie, this so there's a family moves to Santa Carla, which is not a real place, but um, it's and they find out that it's the murder capital of the world. Okay, from the back of the billboard, right. <laughs> Which you know it, that's a valid. You know, I I trust things on spray paint on the back of billboards as uh-huh. to be to be accurate. One hundred percent. And they they're living with the mom's father and um, 
the mom and the, the three kids and she, they're living with her dad because they just had a divorce. And the kids, Michael and Sam, hate the change, of course, because they're, you know, they're teenagers, even though Michael is like 30. And <laughs> my first actual note on this was, okay, WTF is going on with the oiled up bodybuilder playing sax and lip syncing badly. <laughs> That's the bet. Okay. So I'm only 30 minutes in. I think I stopped watching. He drinks the blood. Okay. So they go to that underground mall or whatever that place was that was built on the fault line. They offer him this freaking cool bottle of whatever. Yeah. Right. I was like, that's a sweet bottle, right? That's pretty cool. She's trying to get him to not drink it in one of the yep. worst ways possible. She's just basically like, don't, don't drink, drink it. Don't drink it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, fine. I want to fit in. I'll drink this complete mysterious liquid. And and then he, she, even she's like, it's blood. And he's like, yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with drinking blood. Fine, right. whatever. And he drinks it. And they're like, yeah, now you're one of us. And then I stopped watching. Not before. I saw the crazy bodybuilder oil the saxophone singer who was <laughs> man, that was such a wild thing. I was like, this is the most eighty most... thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I looked this dude up, okay? I'm like, who is this human with like literally oiled up bodybuilder playing sax and oh his name is Tony Capello. <laughs> Sit down for are you sitting down? Yes, I'm one hundred percent sitting down. He is the saxophonist for Tina Turner. Paul, he has been, he played for Tina Turner, Peter Gabriel, Carly Simon, Ringo Starr, and Bob Dylan. So that means that he's, he's not only lip syncing, because there's no way he's actually singing that song, but he really that is, is a song playing he the sang. piano. That is a song he sang. Or not the piano, but the saxophone. No, but it, I mean, in the movie, he's lip syncing, but lip syncing badly. Very so, bad. That is, that is his song. And he was known to occasionally... <clears throat> perform in nothing but a g-string well that's both now i'm gonna send you <laughs> at the same time. i i'm gonna send you a a uh please dear god don't <laughs> finish that sentence no 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 you're gonna love this okay no i'm not <laughs> no i'm not i'm there's protesting an SNL, <laughs> there's an snl sketch okay never mind i'm in starring starring john ham as this guy I'm 100% down then. I thought you were going to be like, I'm sending, he was at this cabaret. You need to see this video. Somebody filmed it. No. Like, the, the sketch is called um, The Curse or something. And, and uh, the, he, they, they changed the guy's name to Sergio. But it's clearly <laughs> this guy. It's clearly this guy. That's and, good. Like he keeps busting through the wall and playing sax like really loud and bad. <laughs> and he's all oiled up and stuff. And he goes, it's Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, that, 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 coming across that made the entire uh, experience worth it. Yeah. Anyway, so apparently uh, the 30 year old punks are a biker gang that looks really angrily at everyone, you know, and when they're walking around. Yeah. And hold up, is that Bill S. Preston Esquire? I see. 100%. Dude. 100%. I looked it up, but this is before he was Bill. This is two years before he was Bill. Yeah. Also, are those um, hair extensions or is that his actual hair? I don't know. Okay. Because it's <laughs> it's it's either a, the one of the worst mullets I've ever seen in my whole life or he couldn't grow his hair I, out past his neck and they put hair extensions in, it, the, in his hair. I cannot express to you how bad the hair is in this whole movie. Oh, I love it. All the hair. I love it. All the hair is so bad. Anyway, so one of the kids who moved is apparently a comic book genius, uh, Corey Hames. Corey yeah. Hames? Something like that. Um, and he tells Mouth from the Goonies all about comic books, the other Corey Feldman. Yeah. I love that you said and they, I've never seen the Goonies. So, Steve, for those of you who are listening, Steve just died. I need to, I need to call his wife and have dude. her go downstairs and resuscitate him. All right. Are you serious? You've never seen the Goonies? I've never seen the Goonies, no. The fuck? <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I've never seen the Goonies. Oh, I, oh, I gotta reevaluate my life. 
Is our friendship I'm like over? Doing it on a pot, I, I might be. I mean, <laughs> no, I just, I see you more as a lost boy now. You're lost. You'd be found. Okay, backing up. <clears throat> I'm, I'm recovered. Anyway, he tells Mal from the Goonies, and the, and the, these these kids talk about. Did you see them talking about the, the the comic books? They're way too serious about this stuff. Oh, well, that's because they're the vibe that I vampire get from hunters. them is that they are actual vampire hunters. Like they they've seen some stuff in their young right. eyes, and they, they are self self appointed vampire hunters. Yes, yeah, and so they're they're like you need every time he comes there, they're like you need to wake up and realize what's going on. And he's like, yeah. what are you talking about? This is just a cool town that we've moved to. And my <laughs> grand, my grandpa is a low-key taxidermist guy. And right, and they're telling them to basically look look at the, the uh, vampire comics as though they're like as, handbooks. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, I, don't, I moved here. You're from here. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, like a normal person would take. Right. Yeah. Well, and and... Corey Feldman the entire time is like trying to be tough guy. He's like talk he's like talking false, like fakely low. <laughs> That's so him. bad. It's so bad. I saw the interview with him later and when he was an adult, he said that the the director um told him to watch Rambo and the, the that the Rambo and uh Chuck Norris movies. He's like, That's your character. Rambo and Chuck Chuck Norris, but you're a kid. <laughs> Oh and so he gosh. like talking like this and it sounds really bad. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Anyway, um, and I, I was gonna say I will say it's very smart of the director to save money on CGI by not that they had CGI, but by doing all of the flying vampire attacks as POV crane shots from the vampire, basically. There's one at the beginning of the movie, there's a couple a couple more throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and they don't show the people ever flying, ever. Ever, like well, they showed the 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 older brother Michael. He um he kind of floats around a little bit, like he can't control himself when he first starts becoming a vampire. But yeah, that's kind of lame. So does he actually get bit, or does he literally just drink he, the he, blood? And everything? He just drinks the blood, and the, the the lore of these kind of vampires is that he drinks the blood and he he slowly is like becoming a vampire, but he doesn't actually go over into vampire fullness until he kill somebody and drinks their blood so it's like he's he's like kind of in limbo until he kills his first kill that's the lamest vampire lore i've ever heard in my life right and and the the gal who uh who's like don't drink the blood yeah the she has already drank twister right she's already drank the blood herself but she hasn't killed anybody yet and so she's kind of like i don't know her name's star and Maybe. he falls for her and he goes out um he he goes out to hang out with the bad hair bikers who have him drink the blood as you mentioned the, the, and then they say his no name so many times in the next scene they're yeah. trying to get him to Michael, like Michael 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 yeah <laughs> fun fact <laughs> i have too many notes on this fun fact the main michael is said so often in the movie that it averages one mention per minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good stat right there. That's oh my word. That's a good stat. I'm glad you shared that with me. Um. Anyway, they the they all jump off the bridge into the mist, and I guess they fly away or something. But he he jumps off the 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 bridge as well, wakes up. And I, and by the way, I love, I love how their mom got a job at a dinky video store and that's enough to support her entire family. <laughs> like, thank you, eighties. <laughs> you know, that's like a joke now, but yeah. So Michael slowly realizes something's up with him and he starts going transparent in mirrors a little bit. And his brother's like, this is, I, I wrote this down cause this is the best quote I've ever heard. And then I saw later that every, like everybody else thinks this is the best quote in the movie. His brother, Corey is like, I can't believe it, Michael. My own brother, a vampire. Wait until I tell mom. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Wait until I tell mom. So he kind of floats around for a while and then he goes looking for Star who got him in this mess. And then we have a subplot of the mom dating her boss, which doesn't seem to go anywhere until the very, very end of the movie. And the Bad Hair Biker Brigade goes on uh, to a teen bonfire 
to kill literally everyone at the bonfire to attempt Michael to do his first kill, but he refuses and runs off and they find star and they, and he and star totally do it. Spoiler. Um, but they don't show anything, you know, just the moon and, uh, kiss and then right. the camera fades. But, to again, the next scene. they, they, they slaughter an entire group of teens and nobody, nobody finds these people. I mean, uh, it's implied that they're a mur- it's a murder capital of of America because there are all these vampires killing people. But I don't know. Anyway, well, that's the thing is like there's so many. Well, the one thing that I gathered from like the, again the first thirty minutes is that it's called the murder capital of the world, but nobody is nobody is finding bodies. The one of the main they all that, disappear. Yeah, one of the main things that you see so often is public billboards of missing people right lots of them so you're no one is ever finding any of these bodies they're they're being eaten they're being torn up they're being consumed somehow they're being disposed of and also i'm not too i'm not entirely convinced anybody's really looking right it's like they're not looking i think that that the families are more concerned than the actual police yep so um, he and Star do it, and so they're like all connected and whatever. And then um, Michael heads home, and his brother and the two vampire hunter, hunter comic store kids suit up and head to the vampire's lair, lair to kill them all because Michael's like, I don't want to become a vampire. And so they're like, we're going to go kill them all during the day. And they, they're they able to rescue Star who and a random kid who they just like suddenly in part of the thing and who showed up on a milk carton for three seconds earlier in the movie. They, 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 rescue, they rescue him. And they also um, successfully stake Bill as Preston Esquire through the heart. And yep. he's the only vampire that they really kill. Of course. Like, and, and okay, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to go to at least this part of the movie. It shows them hanging upside down like bats. And mm-hmm. they're like, they're not, they're not in coffins. They're hanging upside down like bats in the cave. And it shows, <laughs> it shows them whole, like it shows, uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland's is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Holding on to this bar with his big toe, <laughs> the, his big claws on his big toe. It's like, oh my word! It's okay. So anyway, um, they uh, yeah. So uh, and it immediately made me think of the line from Abigail in the movie, which I just watched this past uh, week with my family who loved it. So Joey says, "Okay, what do we do? What do we know about vampires?" And Peter's like, "That they're not real." And Sammy's <laughs> like, "What are we talking about? Like Anne Rice or True Blood? You know, Twilight, very very different kind of vampires." And, and like they didn't mention the Lost Boys with the dumbest kind of vampire you could have. The dumbest. Anyway, they they head back to the house and they know the vampire biker boys are kind of come for them at nightfall, right? Yeah. So, but side note, they are the day and night in this movie are completely out of whack. At one point, the mom is outside getting in her car. Clearly, it's like bright day, like 3 or 4 p.m., and it cuts over to the inside of the house, and it's pitch black outside. Like, by the time she got home, it was pitch black. No, outside. by the time, like, they, they cut away, and she like she's leaving the house. She's like, bye, kids, and it cuts to them to the inside, inside of the house, and it's pitch black. That's so weird. So it's like, that's really bad directing or something. It drove me crazy. Anyway. So they know that the biker, the biker vamps are coming for them. And so they have a really cool, like eighties, a team style montage prepping the house for the vampires coming. Yeah. It's an eighties. You cr- have to have a montage. Right. Including crushing lots of garlic and they, and they put, they put garlic in this bathtub and then the kids cr- crash into the church and they, they, they crash like a baby being baptized at this Catholic church and they steal holy water from like the, the bowl in the back of the church. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just leave. So then uh, Vamp Jack Bauer shows up, and the final and as um the, the final boss, Vamp Jack Bauer, and the, and all the vampires get killed way too easy. And it's like these are, these are children that all just get immediately killed by the vampires. Like it's way too easy. Well, Corey Corey Feldman has to win. Well, he's got the deep voice. Well, yeah. <laughs> fake Rambo so, slash Chuck Norris has got to win. They all die way too easy. And then, like I said, Jack Bauer shows up and um, he makes Michael mad enough that Michael vamps out with like with the eyes in the forehead. You know, did you ever watch Buffy? 
Yes. Empire Slayer. Okay. You know how like the they're they're like they get this Crow Magnon looking forehead thing when they become vampires? Yeah. That's where that's come this is where that comes from. So Josh Whedon was like totally inspired by this movie. And to to do uh, Buffy. Anyway. Well, every, uh, it seems like everyone loves this movie except for you. I don't like it. And so they all die really easy. And so he also dies way too easy. And I must say, it's very uncomfortable to watch. I showed this part to Christy. And she's like, is he dying or having an orgasm? <laughs> like, I can't tell. <laughs> Uh, but now that he's dead, Michael stops his transformation into a vamp because weird lore. Uh, but he still has <laughs> magnificent eighties band hair band hair. It's of course, just fantastic. He is. Yeah. Well, they did. They still had Soul Glow, right? So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You get that reference? And no. Soul Glow is a coming to America reference. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's like the awesome. best. Uh, it's like the best commercial song I've ever heard in my whole life. <laughs> I love the Soul Glow song. Anyway, go ahead. Well, and then all seems well, you know, until the mom's boyfriend show, turns out to be the secret final boss, the King Vamp. So, so under, oh under wow, the whole time. So the guy with the the guy that you, the guy with the roll like the rolled up sleeves. Yeah, the, and the, the who and owns the, the glasses the video store. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, but my only introduction to him was when she goes in. And she says to him, I need a job. Like what video, what video do you want to watch? What movie do you want to watch? Whatever. Right. And she's like, Oh, I'm not here for a movie. I need a job. Right. And they, they, it's a total red herring earlier because they have him over for dinner and he's like, well, can I come in? She, he's like, he's like, can you can invite me in? He's like, oh, yeah, so well, that's uh, a dead giveaway. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, it makes you think that he's been her the whole time, but they, they feed him garlic. They show him a cross. They, throw holy water and nothing bothers the guy. And then he vamps out and they gets the all eyebrowed and everything. They're like, what happened? We did. And he's like, you should know that when you invite a vampire into your house, you can't do anything to hurt him. Like, okay. I, That's I guess not. You, okay. So that wasn't in the comic book. I don't like this movie so far. Now the fact that it, <laughs> it's the vampire lore, like it's weird. It's it's all, all all over the place. It's weird and twisted and everything that you would think would be true or have been told is true about vampires is completely like, it's kind of like why I hated twilight because it's like they're sparkly and they can be in the the sunlight, but what? I don't know. Yeah. It don't mess with the lore. Don't mess with the lore. So he overpowers them all. And then he, (laughs) Like it takes him like literally about ten seconds to talk the mom into turning wanting to be a vampire to go to be with him or something, and mom's like walking toward him to get her neck bit. But right when that happens, grandpa, who's been out at a date or something, slams through his own house with his truck with like uh, spikes, wooden spikes on the front of it. Slams through the house, skewers the king vampire. And I'm like, how did he know? Yeah. Just, anyway, and then he got, he gets he gets out of the he gets out of the truck and he goes, "That's the worst part of living in Santa Carla. It's all the damn vampires." <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and so Michael has a girl and all's well. End of movie. Um, <laughs> wow. So it's okay. The movie is okay, I guess. But I think the reason people love it so much is it's just the nostalgia because. First, well, first of all, first of all, the soundtrack is fantastic. It's got great mu- music to go along with this stuff. It's fan, it's yeah, fantastic, one hundred percent. Um, and I think they did a lot of things first, which is great. Yeah, but I, I think it was one of these movies that was just edgy enough that a lot of people were, a lot of people's parents allowed them to see it, and it's like the one of the first scary, and it's what I've heard from a lot of people, first scary movie that they ever saw, and um, it's. I, I think that's why it's like, it's like you're the, I don't know. It really impacted a lot of people. And so they have a great, they have great memories of it. Right. But it's, it doesn't hold up. That That's maybe what in I, 87, but not now. That's what I said about. That's exactly what I said about the shining. Like my, yeah. my theory is, is that it, the reason you think that this movie is great is because it made an impression on you when you were formidable. 
right, when right. you were forming your opinions about horror movies or when you were just in the formative ages of your life. And mm -hmm. same same thing here. So when you go back and maybe rewatch a movie, you forgive all of the badness or poor right. directing or poor choices or bad acting or whatever the case is. Whatever the case is, you can't see it. Or maybe yep. you do acknowledge that it exists, but it's still formative for you. So you just never hear anything really bad about it or don't care that it right. is bad um, because you saw it when you were 12 and you were going through your goth phase. And right. this movie high, did a good job of highlighting goth people as, exactly. you know, in a movie. Yep. They were just in a, they were very highlighted in a movie and that there's nothing wrong with obviously the goth choice. I'm not, I'm not no, knocking no, no. that. I'm, I'm more like there are movie and I acknowledge that myself. There are movies that I have seen that I will say they're, they're, they're hills for me to die on. I, I will say mm -hmm. that this movie is, is a great movie and I'm going to look past all of the bad stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's one of those situations of, like what you're going to like. Everybody likes something different. And if you, if you love this movie because of nostalgia, more power to you. Yeah. But me seeing this for the first time after, especially after, I think part of my problem is it's been built up for so many years. As long as I can remember people going on about the Lost Boys, and I, for some reason I never got around to seeing it just because, I don't know, Kiefer Sutherland's hair is horrible in this movie. Dude, what are you um, talking about, dude? <laughs> the hair is like one of the best. It's like it's this blonde spike up front like this flat top situation and like the the mullet in the back it's like what? this is this is the this feels very much like i'm bald and i'm very jealous and you have hair and you're like screw that that's gross and disgusting whatever like all of the hair in this movie is awesome and it's because it's totally 80s and I'm obsessed with like eight that 80s vibe. It that 80s right. vibe is fantastic. It's what it's part of the reason why I do very much love Stranger Things. There are many aspects right. of the reason I like Stranger Things, but the 80s aspect of it makes me lean yeah. in more. Yeah. You know. So when I first saw all of their hair, I was like, that's sweet. What are they in freaking what are they trying out for Bon Jovi? Like I immediately <laughs> Think that that's fun, but you're yeah. just no. I'm a I'm a hair hater. You're a hair hater. Yeah. Well, you got yeah. the privilege of doing that. So I, I I'm privileged. But so I give the Lost Boys a two stars. Only two. Not even a yeah. point. Whatever. Just a flat two. No. I, yeah. I've I've not. I'm not worrying about the two, but just straight up two. I mean the points. I mean decimals, but yeah, just two. Hmm. Two stars. Wow. That's all you get from me. Wow, wow, wow. It's a forgettable movie, Zach. Oh my gosh. That's some strong stuff right there. Forgettable movie. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to have to finish it. After we're done here, I should definitely go down to and finish it, and then I'll text you about my okay. thoughts or just write them down and save them <laughs> for next episode. But yeah, wow. Okay forgettable movie is a that's it so <laughs> like i i understand that claim about the wicker man it's not necessarily yeah. I, I, no i don't because it's not it, the wicker man's not bad it's not a forgettable movie like i don't know if i had watched it in 87 it would have been not a forgettable movie because it's 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 the first to do many many things yeah i i get it but but coming at it, coming at it from what, I, what my perspective now, I've just seen so many really good vampire movies, you know. Yeah, they just this is not one of them. Yeah, but forgettable movie is forgettable movie is the claim. Like that's the thing that I'm like, oh my gosh, because like when I think of a forgettable movie, I'm like, okay, well, Kirk Cameron's Left Behind, forgettable <laughs> movie, right? Like that's a forgettable movie. No, yeah, I, I, I didn't put a lot of thought into saying forgettable movie, so I don't want to. Okay, well, don't put I'm too much too, weight on too it. Too deep in it. Okay, fine. I'm putting. I'm no, putting it's, all. It's, the it's forgettable. On it. We'll put all the weight because it's forgettable. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, dude. Okay, but it's one star for me, and then you get another star because of the groundbreakingness of the movie. So you get two. Interesting. 
Interesting, dude. Well, we should do a we should do a check in here, Steve. You, that's so good. Okay, we're gonna do a final check in. I'm gonna I'm yeah. probably gonna call it because this is this is uh it's the, fi- the it's the final time. Yeah. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say more than likely we won't get any other vote okay. that would swing it towards the other movie. Um okay. so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it time of death. Here we go at five forty seven <laughs> PM. Uh the Lost Boys is our champion. Oh yeah. So out of all the movie all, all eight movies that we have seen that we've put against each other, it follows is now in the championship. The Lost Boys is in the championship against each other. Steve, you're the only one who voted for It Follows. <laughs> Makes sense because you're a super yeah. you're a super hater. Um <laughs> forgettable movie. I understand. Yeah. I will say this. It Follows is a pretty great movie. It's pretty good. It's in really compare, good. I did get bored 30 minutes into watching The Lost Boys. I did not <laughs> right? I did not get bored watching It Follows. I'm very curious about that. So, <laughs> but both Mark and uh Scott are the other people. So there are 3 votes total. Yep. The You Run podcast, which Scott runs that account. There's you, and then there is VHS from the Crypt, which is uh, Mark. Mark, right. And yeah. both of them voted for the Lost Boys. Again, well, there are. It, it's okay. It's okay for them to be wrong. We you know? still. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was this was only posted 10 hours ago so we have the rest of the day technically there could be one or two maybe people who are gonna gonna yeah. maybe side with you but i think because of the popularity of the lost boys because of the impressionability if that's a word mm-hmm. of yeah. the lost boys i also think it's a very difficult decision so yeah anyway we'll uh, we'll find out the 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 final Tomorrow will be, I'll post up on Instagram, but that's as right. of the recording, not actually tomorrow when people are listening to this. So, all right. Anywho, would you, would you like to hear about what I'm going to force you to watch this week? Oh yes. I should definitely choose your movie as well. Yes. I would absolutely love to hear. Okay. I would like, hold on a moment. Okay. This week is a, a week. For, is, is, are, we're not, are we still doing, we're not doing summer anymore, right? We, the, the, this was the end of the summer okay. series. Okay. Yes. So. I mean, you could technically still give me a summer movie, but oh, sure, the sure. summer theme is over. So. I'm going to ask you a question. I know you love these. I do. <laughs> You make me choose um, belief or believer or un- disbelief, right? Like you're okay. You're are you a more of a fan of Matt Dillon or Elijah Wood? Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon. Yeah. Matt Damon. Dillon. Who the heck is Matt Dillon? Uh, he's in a bunch of movies. Well, thanks, Steve. I'll just look him up. Don't worry about it, buddy. Well, I, well, you know, you're gonna look him up. You're gonna find out what, which was. What, what, oh, I'm, okay. No, I just want to see his picture. That's all I really want. Oh, okay, see. okay. Do you know who he is? Yeah, I know who yeah. he is. I can't think of one horror movie that he's in, despite the fact that I'll, I'm sure that I'll recognize it when you give it to me. <laughs> oh man, I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I'll uh, let's flip a coin. Great heads. Okay, heads. Okay, it's tails. What does that mean? I don't know. You didn't decide. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is fun. All right, let's Jesus. do let's do this one. Let's do the house that Jack built. Oh my Sorry. gosh, yes, he was in he was in the house that Jack built. Yeah, I think I started list. to watch this movie and thought it was really odd. 
I'm it's very, very odd. I'm very curious about the movie. That's why I wanted to watch it. Okay. But I think that I, it must have hit me at like the right time for me to feel bored about it or whatever. It, it is odd. And I'll be honest, this movie took me a while to, a while to get through because it's a Lars von Trier movie, which he is bizarre. And the the um the reason it took me a while to get through is it's so bleak. Mm. So it's not a fun movie. I mean, it's it's good. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's not a happy movie. Sorry. Of course, he like murders ladies in their in his truck or whatever. Like, yeah, right. That's not. That's the only not. part of this movie that I remember. Right. It's like these ladies are stranded on the side of the road. He picks them up, has a conversation, and for, like Uma Thurman is in the movie. I think she dies maybe for a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, she, she has really. Yeah, it's yeah. basically kind of a, a. Yeah, you'll see. But it's I I four start it. It's really I I like it a lot, but it is it is unsettling and disturbing. Oh, so that falls in line with everything that you like. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so let's go with the weird it's on, movie it's on that Hulu, you're going to watch. By the way. What was that? It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Fantastic. Yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Just in case people would doubt. That's it? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Buddy, you're going to watch the movie called Chopping Mom. Chopping Mom. Oh, I, yeah, I think I might have this on my list. I don't know. Chopping Mall is from 1986. It is... <laughs> it's on my watch list, yeah. It is listed on IMDb as dark comedy horror sci-fi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's look it up on, on the old Googs. Chopping Mall, full movie. Here we go. It's on Peacock. So Peacock and Fubo TV and AMC Plus and... Shutter and Freebie. It's on a bunch. It's everywhere apparently right now. So, yeah, Plex. Yep. Yeah, 1986. So we'll go back a year. So 80, 87 is clearly not the year for you. You didn't like the Lost <laughs> Boys. We'll go back in time. 86. Maybe you'll like Chopping Mall. Have you seen this one? I have also not. I've also not seen Chopping Mall. I'm very excited about Dude, this movie. You need to quit giving me ones you haven't seen because you, you don't Steve, watch them. Don't tell me what to do. This is America, <laughs> and I'll do what I want. In a nutshell, harrowing, eerie, intense is the is what Google describes this movie as. Okay. You can also so <laughs> they recommend you that you also see Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's, oh, of course they did. Yeah. Is the number one. Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Comet, Night of the Creeps, Street Trash. So all of these movies are fantastic, Steve. The stuff, Maximum Overdrive. Slumber Party Massacre. So basically, this is the the eightiesest eighties movie. <laughs> I'm hyping this up clearly as like one of the best eighties movies. Yeah, um, but it's called Chopping Mall. So come on, how bad can it be? Well, <laughs> how bad can it be? It had a budget of eight hundred thousand dollars. Can't be that bad. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Chop him all. I'm gonna put it up on up on our up on our Instagram. I, I need right. to start doing that in the podcast where because I put them up. I pit I pit both of the movies that we're gonna see this week up on Instagram. Oh, okay. To see who like, which one would win, but I never talk mm-hmm. about it on the episode. <laughs> so thank you. For, well, thank you for mentioning it. Anyway, all right, Steve. Enjoy the uh, depression that will come after your movie. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. (laughs) Thank you very much, buddy. See you later. See ya, see ya. All right, listeners, that's a wrap for another episode of Horrors Yet Unseen. Thanks for joining us. And we'd love for you to become part of the conversation. Just drop us a voicemail at 1216-202-5495 or email us at horrorsyetunseen at gmail.com. And keep up with the latest by following us on Instagram. That handle is at Horrors Yet Unseen Pod. We'd also appreciate it if you like and review our show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Your support means a lot to us. See you next time. Mm-hmm.